This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to answer the question, does Bitcoin have smart contracts? This video is going to be an introduction to something that many of you have asked me to talk about, which is BitVM, which is this new computing paradigm for Bitcoin. But in order to understand that, I wanted to make this video to provide the necessary context. So we have this long list of beginner FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, all these things that you've probably heard and that we're going to be hearing a lot of in the new bull cycle, that Bitcoin's a scam, a Ponzi, a pyramid, it's too slow, it can't scale, it wastes energy, it's going to be banned. And then the last one, which is the one I want to talk about today, Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts. Now, where do people get these talking points from? For the most part, they mostly get them from ship coiners, from altcoiners who are trying to dump their own crappy crypto on these newcomers. We have people like Chris Larson, co-founder of Ripple, XRP, who's been giving money to Greenpeace to try to FUD Bitcoin and say that it wastes electricity. We also have uh, examples like this. Here is a promoter of Pepe saying Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts and there's no, it's nothing, it's a meme, it's an ancient arcane technology. People are switching to Pepe, the dankest meme. So this is the context in which you will learn that Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts. If you ever want to investigate something like this and learn more about uh, the answers to FUD like this, you can always go to my homepage for the videos, which I'll link to in the description notes below. And there's a search uh, button here where you can type in, for example, quantum. If you're worried about quantum computers and Bitcoin, you can type that in and get a whole list of videos. So today, what I wanted to do is discuss this assertion that Bitcoin doesn't have smart contracts. This, in fact, is not true at all. Bitcoin does have smart contracts. It has things like very simple signatures, like pay to public key hash, where you have to sign with a private key in order for your Bitcoin to be moved. It has multi-sig, where it takes multiple keys to sign to move Bitcoin. It has something called time locks, where the Bitcoin can't be moved until a certain block height is achieved or a certain timestamp as measured in Unix. There's also There are also hashed time lock contracts you may have heard about. HTLCs, which are used as part of the Lightning Network. So Bitcoin does indeed have smart contracts, but it has only simple smart contracts. It does not have complex smart contracts. And this is a distinction that altcoin promoters are not interested in making for you. But Bitcoin does have smart contracts. Why doesn't it have complex smart contracts? Is it because Bitcoin devs are not very advanced or not very good programmers? Is it because Bitcoiners are backward and closed-minded? Surprisingly, no, it's not either of these reasons. Bitcoin does not have complex smart contracts because that was the decision that was made. That's how Satoshi and the Bitcoin community wanted it to be and continue to want it to be. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment and share this video. That would really help to extend the reach of this channel. So why did Satoshi and why does the Bitcoin community not want to have complex smart contracts on Bitcoin? This is why. We can say that a computer or computer language is quote unquote Turing complete, named after Mr. Turing, if it can run any computer algorithm, including things like conditionals, logical loops, etc. As we said, Satoshi intentionally made Bitcoin scripting language, which is called script with a capital S. He intentionally made this scripting language Turing incomplete in order to decrease the attack surface and the pot potential attacks on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin script could run loops, that could be weaponized to overload Bitcoin nodes and enable denial of service attacks, DOS attacks. Not understanding this really basic point, here comes Vitalik Buterin. He came along and decided to create the first Turing complete blockchain, which is Ethereum, the first Turing complete blockchain that can be used for programming smart contracts and decentralized applications, also known as dApps. But here's the thing, Ethereum made a fatal mistake by choosing to do everything at the base layer. So what you have on Ethereum, you have the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. This is basically a Turing com complete computer. It's a computation engine that runs smart contracts on Ethereum. It's Turing complete by design unlike Bitcoin. And this is a great selling point. You can always say, well, my crypto is Turing complete. Well, Bitcoin isn't, but this is of course a half truth that hides a very deep lie. By running all of these complex smart contracts at the base layer as Ethereum does, this has two major downsides. As we said, it massively increases the attack surface for Ethereum, and it also causes blockchain bloat 
and other complexities that make it impossible for the average person to run an Ethereum node, thus making Ethereum much less decentralized than Bitcoin. In fact, in Ethereum, almost everyone outsources their nodes to corporations and corporations that you don't really think of when you think of freedom and decentralization, things like Google, which now offers cloud-based blockchain node services for Ethereum. And then the classic pro provider of this, ETH Nodes as a Service, is Infura. Infura is a company that is under the umbrella, uh, the parent company, Consensus. Consensus was founded by Joe Lubin, who's one of the co-founders of Ethereum. So you have the same guy controlling the company that controls many of the nodes and he also controls the main wallet that most Ethereum and DeFi people use, which is the MetaMask wallet. So this is exactly the problem. When you create too much com complexity at the base layer, you end up with a corporation like Google or like Consensus providing the node service and the wallet service. And this is a real problem when you have the same guy who is an Ethereum founder and a whale controlling your nodes and controlling your wallet. It also leads to problems like this, which happened a couple years ago when Infura went down, it caused massive problems all across the Ethereum network. Bitcoin is very different. It's very easy to run your own node in Bitcoin. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi or an old laptop. Anyone can do it. Lots of people do it. And I do teach how to do it in my course. You can also just Google it on YouTube and find many good uh, explainers. Only Bitcoin was set up by Satoshi to remain secure and decentralized as it grows. The reason that Ethereum has had to use ETH nodes as a service and companies like Infura is simply because they chose to do too much at the base layer and thus you have blockchain bloat and complexity, which is the enemy of security and the enemy of decentralization. Only Bitcoin was set up by Satoshi in the right way to remain secure and decentralized as it grows. Ethereum really shot itself in the foot right out of the gate. There have been a lot of people who've made money holding the token, but as a project, it was essentially doomed from the beginning. And the world is finally waking up to Ethereum's many problems, especially in the wake of Ethereum's disastrous transition to proof of stake, which gives even more control to the beneficiaries of the pre-mine. And we can see that in what has happened to Ethereum's price versus Bitcoin ever since the merge in uh, late 2022, Ethereum continues to lose value and it's really been accelerated in the last week or so. Ethereum continues to lose value to Bitcoin. Now here's the fi final irony and what will lead to our next video. It is now possible to create complex smart contracts on Bitcoin. Turing complete computation is now available for Bitcoin thanks to a brilliant new innovation, one that doesn't even require a soft fork or consensus change. So unlike something like drive chains, which would require a soft fork or change to the soft uh, change to the software. This one, this innovation does not require soft fork or consensus change. This, of course, is BitVM, which I hope to talk about in tomorrow's video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.